All right, I'll remind everybody again, if you want to get um, subscribed to the SMT newsletter, um, stocks are moving down into an intermediate decline. Um, I, uh, as long as we are moving down into a bottom and approaching a, a period where um, I'm going to be calling for people to, to buy uh, and then hold on for an intermediate degree rally, uh, that's when I open the SMT up to new subscribers. I, after the bottom is already passed, then I close the SMT. I, I try to, <clears throat> I've, I've tried to prevent people from doing what their emotions uh, want to make them do, and, and that generally means that uh, people want to buy at tops because the market has gone up for a long time and they've become um, very overconfident in that the trend is never going to turn and go back down that there's never going to be a correction and so that's <clears throat> that's when people want to join the SMT they want they want to join at tops just like they want to buy at tops um, I'm trying to prevent people from doing that so I want to you know, try and get people to buy at bottoms and then sell at tops we're moving down into um, a bottom in the stock market right now I, I don't think we've bottomed yet I think we've probably still got a few more days I go into this in a lot more detail in my nightly reports and especially in the weekend report that I just published but I'm going to go over real quick the uh, multi-year cycle in the stock market and um, what I think is probably playing out so there is a, a long-term four-year cycle in the stock market now sometimes that that um, cycle can stretch a bit long sometimes it's a bit short Usually a short cycle will follow a, a long cycle, and here's a perfect example. Um, the bear market bottom uh, here in um, 2002 produced a really long, about a seven, almost a seven-year cycle uh, that bottomed uh, with the Great Recession in 2009. Uh, the Fed stretched this with lots and lots of QE, and then we get a short cycle that followed that. So the, the short cycle kind of evened out uh, the the overall cycles. Um, once once we get that bottom, then our our next uh, bottom came here in 2016, just a little over four years. So that was about normal. And then almost exactly four years into the uh, four year cycle low uh, during the uh, COVID recession. And I don't see any compelling reason <clears throat> to expect a short cycle this time so our four-year cycle low is going to come due sometime in either march somewhere between march and and fall of uh, 2024 so um now let, let me go over uh, translation real quick now now translation just um it, it's just a way to measure whether the cycle tops on the left side of the midpoint in which case it has uh, generally has more months to decline and, the, and then when that happens you you tend to get um, a lower low uh, or a right translated cycle which tops on the right side of uh, of the cycle of, of the midpoint in the cycle and and those tend to uh, bottom uh, above the previous cycle <coughs> cycle low because it doesn't have as many months to to run but but they do often um, right translated cycles will often crash not always but but often so here's here's an example uh, this really long cycle uh, all the fed qe pumped up a housing bubble housing bubble popped and then we get the crash down into the uh, bottom in uh, 2009 uh, kind of the same thing with covid here lots of money printing stretch this cycle uh, the the cycle right translated to an extreme degree. It it right translated almost four years before topping, and then we get a crash down into the uh, bottom. But uh, these right translated cycles, you can see uh, this bottom held above the previous bottom, and right translated cycles usually do that. Not always, not 100%, but usually they will. Same thing here. Right translated cycle tops, you know, well past the two-year mark and the um, four-year cycle low comes in well above the, the previous one. Same thing here. Um, now, uh, the, the Great Recession, of course, this was a, a different story. This was an extreme right translated cycle, but um, 
it included the bursting of a housing bubble and a massive inflation and um, the S&P did drop slightly below the uh, 2000 low. Now, um, interesting here, uh, we've got potentially, we've got a left translated for your cycle. Uh, this top, unless we exceed it, now I, I do think we're going to have a pretty convincing rally here and, and uh, you know, the, the big money, the banks, you know, if they uh, are starting to anticipate that a, uh, you know, a, a major bear market is beginning, they will usually try and manufacture an exit. A lot of times that will come with either, you know, a, a pretty close test of the all-time highs or a marginal breakout of those all-time highs. You can kind of see it here. Uh, you know, they, even though it was obvious the housing bubble was bursting and we were in trouble, um, the you know, market was pushed up high enough to um, get a marginal breakout above this peak. That allowed the smart money in the banks to, to unload their positions on the uh, unsuspecting hedge funds and retail traders and get out of the way of the crash. And then in, in 2000, kind of the same thing, uh, just a, a churning move for many months here that allowed um, smart money to um, hand the bag off to uh, the retail traders and hedge funds that uh, were under the assumption that the tech bubble uh, was going to last forever. So, you know, one could make a case that maybe this was our retest and this was giving, um, uh, you know, smart money the chance to get out of their positions ahead of the bear market that's uh, coming. But I tend to think we're going to have a pretty convincing rally here, um, probably into January, maybe even into February. But, but I would say, you know, maybe into January would be more likely and get a little bit closer to this top. And then we roll over and start down into that uh, major four year cycle low. It'll probably uh, include a recession, maybe a really hard recession. Maybe the war in Europe really starts to spread. And uh, as I pointed out, these left translated uh, cycles can very often make a lower low. So as of right now, this topped uh, on the left side of two years. Two years would be a, a normal mid midway point for a four year cycle. So if we didn't, if we don't rally past uh, two years, then this, this becomes uh, left translated. Uh, so in order to do that, uh, the, this rally coming out of this um, intermediate decline would have to come up and make a higher high. If it did that, then I would, I would expect that the um, four year cycle low would hold above um, the COVID crash. Uh, but if we don't, if, if we rally up and, you know, it, by mid January, maybe we're just barely getting above this peak and we're threatening to roll over again and, and we don't make a higher high, then I think um, there is risk that the four year cycle low could, could drop below this uh, COVID um, uh, bottom here. Um, uh, very similar to what happened <clears throat> here in, in 2000. This was a left translated cycle. It topped uh, in less than two years. And then we, we had more months going down than we did going up. And you can see uh, this started the secular uh, bear market that lasted for uh, um, about nine years. And this uh, bottom uh, dropped uh, well below the previous four year cycle low. So that is potentially setting up, but but you know I'm seeing a lot of people uh, looking for a crash. But I I think you're a little bit early. I think we're going to get it, but I think you're a little early. I think I think uh, the banks and the smart money is going to want to try and manufacture an exit for themselves ahead of that four-year cycle low, and so I think you should be prepared for one more pretty good rally that uh, comes up and maybe tests these all-time highs. Maybe it even gives us a marginal breakout. A lot of times uh, you can get a, a top or a bottom like that with a marginal um, breakout uh, and then the uh, the smart money sells into that breakout and the, and the bag holders, retail traders, and the hedge funds uh, are buying that breakout and then they get stuck at, at a, 
a, a top or a bottom. This, this is what happened here. We can see this, this um, false breakdown. That was the bottom, 2009. Kind of uh, very similar here. Uh, got a false breakdown, uh, a false top uh, here. And uh, we may do something similar here. So um, for the people that are looking for a crash, um, I do think we're going to get a crash. Might even be a crash big enough to take us below the uh, COVID lows, but I don't think it's ready to start just yet. I think we've got to have one more convincing intermediate rally that gives that smart money their exit to get out of positions and get out of the way of that four-year cycle low. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm going to be monitoring this in the uh, premium newsletter. Um, and, and again, uh, as long as we are moving down into this intermediate cycle low, I'll keep the newsletter open to new subscribers. Um, you'll have, you know, at, at least next week to get on board if you want. Uh, want to get on board and try and catch this bottom, ride the rally up, and then uh, unload your shares along with the smart money and the banks uh, at, at the top and then uh, get out of the way of the four-year cycle low that's going to be due uh, sometime uh, mid next year.